Hello, my name's David, and in this video, we're going to paint a lion. Now, I found the lion using my stock tab. I was on Pixabay. I put in the word lion, which brought up these. This is the one I selected. There's the photographer. Now, you may notice from the thumbnail, you'll certainly notice when you download it, that I've cropped it, and I used a square format crop. Reason for cropping it? Lots of dark area on the right-hand side, a fair bit of black on the left hand side and I thought the square format really suited the subject. Okay, let's make a start by heading over to the layers panel. Command J, Control J will duplicate the background layer. Coming to the word background, I'm going to double click. We're going to call it what it's about to become. It's also a great way of being able to identify the layers, but we're going to call it painted. Not using the paintbrush, we are going to use a brush tool, which is in with the blur brush tool down the bottom. We have got the smudge brush tool. Right, as the name implies, it is a brush tool. So we can go to the brush panel. No, not basic. Worth experimenting, acrylics, dry media, really good. There's some fantastic brushes here, but my favorite has become oils. Now in with the oils, let's just scroll this one here, it is the classic oil dense. It's 128 pixels. Let's make a start with this. Command one, control one will take us into 100% of the image using the space bar to move my way around. And if we click down and you can see, just go in the direction of the fur. That looks really good like this. And it can see this is why I like using this brush gives that nice strand look for the fur or hair. Yes, you can use it on hair as well. And if we come over, you can see with the smudge brush tool, I am smudging the darker pixels into the lighter pixels, just going over that. And if you go to the lighter pixels, you can smudge them down into the darker pixels. So just change the way the direction that you are using the brush tool in and what you can also do is just give a little bit of a flick to the side just helps with that uh, painted look right just going over here just smudging the lighter pixels down i think with that there that looks good now i'm using the brush at its default size i haven't been tempted to take it up and don't be spend more time doing it. If you use a larger brush, what tends to happen is you get a little bit of um, sore toothing on the edges of the paintwork, which doesn't look particularly good. Couldn't resist it, went over that area. The other reason I like this brush so much, come to the end of the fur or hair, and it gives a really nice finish. So that's the other reason I like this brush. Now you'd be pleased to hear, I'm not going to do the entire lion in one go. What I've done is I've broken it up into bite-sized pieces. So let's come down to main. I'm gonna click on restore snapshot. And there it is, the lion's mane is now fully painted. I say fully painted, you always spot bits and pieces. You think, oh, missed out on that. First of all, click on the layer so it is live. That is important, <laughs> right? Just coming over there will do. Right, changing brushes. Another really good brush is Raid Fibers Oil. So let's click on this one. Using the right hand square bracket, let's take it up in size. I'm gonna just come to the nose, going roughly in the direction of the fur. When you've got dark lines like this, clicking down, going over it in one go. They are important. It does add a little bit more emphasis to the face and if I just come over here giving larger strokes in you can see it's a much finer brush zooming in even closer space bar now I'm going to press command or control that's going to 150 percent and you can see the way it just gives those yeah much finer brush stroke coming up over this area going over the top bringing brush strokes down in both directions like this right just going to quickly go over the nose and down with the nose itself i prefer to take the lighter pixels so i'm just clicking dragging it over the darker pixels now i'm going to go in the opposite direction 
like that and there's the nose painted coming down over these dark lines once again using longer strokes with it just helps to add the emphasis and there we go where you've got areas where we have got the black and the white reduce the size of the brush down use much shorter strokes if you use longer strokes what's going to happen is you're going to blend the colors together the blacks the whites and you're going to end up with something like this so just use shorter strokes just to maintain that black and white speckled look that we have on the lion's cheek and just into this area as well just giving brush strokes in let's go in both directions coming to the edge here and there we are right so just moving up to this point so you can see we've got some flyaway fur flyaway hair just increasing the size of the brush going over it you can see how easily we can remove that flyaway fur and if we just go from the lighter pixels blending them up into the darker pixels like that that will do nicely okay once again i have prepared another snapshot on this so let's head down to face i'm going to go to restore snapshot there it is lion's face painted command one control one there we go looking pretty good so far clicking on the painted layer so this is live i'm just going to drop the size of the brush down i've still got the there it is the raid fibers oil still got this taking it down even further using the left hand square bracket command one control one oh we are in at 100 percent tell you what space bar now command or control again going in a little bit closer just coming over the eye like that looks a little bit hard those ed well those edges those eyes i think we can do better so let's come across we need first of all to make a selection of them so going across the toolbox I'm going to pick up the marquee tool, the elliptical marquee tool. Now we've got two eyes, so I want to make two selections. So go into mode, new. Now we're going to change this to add. Let's go to the first eye. Notice that little plus symbol next to the marquee tool, coming roughly to the center, clicking down, dragging it out and over like this. That'll do. Come into this eye. We can now make multiple selections. We're going to go down to adjustments. We're going to go to HSL, hue, saturation and luminance. The marquee tool done its job. We've created these two little white specks. We can use command D, control D to remove the selections. Okay, if you're on the all colors, change it. I think the eyes are going to be yellow. Notice how it's swung round into this position. Picking up the picker. We can confirm the color by bringing it out. We're going to click down. Notice how it swung right up the way around. Yellow has changed to orange. Go into the saturation shift, moving it across. Yeah, look at those eyes. Let's move it over. I'm going to leave it there, 57%. I like that. Don't forget, it is an adjustment layer. You can come back, you can change, you can adjust it. Clicking down, moving my way around. Tip of the nose, see these little speckles here. It's obviously been rubbing its nose while eating its dinner. So let's click on the painted layer. We're going to start by using the add pixel layer. Come into the word pixel, double clicking, renaming this layer so you know what's on it, calling it nose. Now we need to change the color from white. I've got the foreground color, I just spotted it on my toolbox. We're going to change it to red. I'm using RGB and I'm going to click down, drop in the lightness. You can see the top slider here as well. You can click on it, moving it back and forth. There, that looks pretty good. Pressing B on the keyboard gives me the brush tool. Just going to paint over that. There he is with the red tip to his nose, but we can blend it in. Coming to the blend modes, really useful. Coming down, let's go to color dodge like how that you can see that speckled look and if we go to the opacity slider just fading it in let's take it six 
53%. Let's leave it like that. Command 0, Control 0. Looking pretty good so far. Now for the next stage, I wanted to add a little bit of texture to the image, but what happened? Yes, I had a really nice surprise. Heading back over to my stock tab, we're going to remove Lion by clicking on the cross here. Still with Pixabay, I'm going to put in Paper Texture. And the top center one here, this is the one we're going to use. Clicking on it, bringing it out, placing it as central as we can on the image. Pressing V on the keyboard, I now need to find both the horizontal and the vertical center. There it is there, those red and the green lines. The reason for doing this is I can come to the grab handle on the right hand side, press and hold down command or control. Both grab handles come in together, both are going to snap because snapping is turned on. Top center, pressing command or control, bottom comes out, snapping turned on, in they go. And if we go back over to layers, this is where the magic happens. Changing the blend mode. And as we go through the blend modes, I really like this one. I've got a feeling there's a bit of mileage with that. Just drop down the opacity. Coming down to overlay. Look at the difference this makes to the image. Taking it from this. Yeah, that looks really good. Dropping down the opacity. Just a touch into the, let's go for the 80%. Yes, like how that is looking. Pressing S on the keyboard gives me back the smudge brush tool. Clicking on the painted layer, zooming in, Command 1, Control 1. Something else you might like to do is come down to Live Filters. I'm going to scroll, I'm going to go to High Pass, and let's lift this up. We need to see through it. Changing the blend mode, let's go to Overlay, and I'm going to take the radius up. Let's go to this area here. Notice if I just click to accept it, 27.2. If I just unfold it for a second from the painted layer, look how it just adds a little bit more emphasis to those brush strokes. Right, folding it up, Command 0, Control 0. You may want to leave it like this. That could be where you finish off on just your painted lion, or you can take it a stage further. Click on the thumbnail, so this is now live. And we're going to go to Brushes. I'm going to scroll through. i still got the Smudge Brush tool. I'm going to come to my Impressionist Brush. Command 1, Control 1. Let's go to 100%. Let's zoom out here. I'm just going to click down. I'm going to add in some brush strokes. You can see the way we can change direction like this. And there it is. That gives a really nice oil paint effect. Just go over it slowly, changing the size. You can build up the effect. You can go quite large like this. You can drop down the size, going over it. And just spend a bit of time doing that small brush over here. And on the cheek. Once again, little bits and pieces, just short strokes. The reason for doing this is if you do something as well you don't like, you can always use Command Z, Control Z to undo it. But you can see how we can build up this effect. What I mean by Command Z, Control Z is if you come in over the eye and then you do that sort of thing, you can use Command Z, Control Z. There it is. We have just undone it. And once you've done that, what I can do is just let me show you. There is the finished one that I did. Command one, control one. Then taking it a stage further, we can go to this. And again, zooming in. It takes a little bit of time to, to do it, but it's well worth it. And it is quite therapeutic as well. So go on, give it a try. There you are. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe. Plenty more videos to come. Click that little bell icon. You'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.